September 14th, 2016, Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Okay, very good. Mr. Richard should be on his way. Uh, we, only need, we only need four people to make it a, a quorum. We've got five, so we're in good shape. One, two, three, four, five. So, um, Stand for roll uh, for a pledge of allegiance, please. Uh, pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> and uh, we'll start with approval of the minutes of the August 10th 2016, do I have a motion? Move so approval. approval. Second. Second. Second down there. Who uh -huh. seconded it? Thank you. Mr. Crockett. Any discussion on the motion? I just asked to have added, uh, it was the rare occasion we didn't have an equal, uh, a 5 0 vote. I just asked to have that identified in the future uh, for the record of who voted in one way or the other. So that's the only change I requested. Okay, all in favor? Unanimous, uh, the, uh, unanimous, they are in? You can abstain, okay. Let's start right in with the uh, appeals. It's appeal number 2585. It's a variance appeal by Charles and uh, Eliza Lee, 47 uh, Winslow Homer Road, Assessors Map U19, Parcel 42. As you may remember, we tabled this from the last meeting, and I'm, I'm really glad we did that from, uh, from the information I read. Um, I thought it was really helpful. So. Thank you for doing that extra work. Uh, as far as the board is concerned, I would like to request that we allow all of the comments and the process from the previous meeting to be allowed into this meeting, and then wrap it up from there if it's uh, comfortable. Was she able to review the last meeting? Okay. Did you have a chance to see that or read it? Yes. Could you name your name, please, and address, and what you'd like to give us an overview of where we left off last. Sure, my name is Trevor Watts, and I'm speaking on behalf of Charles and Eliza Lee for 47 Winslow Homer Road, and uh, we're asking for a variance to uh, reduce, basically reduce the front yard setback from 40 feet to 28 feet. So in the, uh, it, it seemed as though in the last meeting, um, all of the arguments uh, were accepted, save for the argument about one of the principal reasons why we're doing this is to um, try and maintain uh, the sort of the mature vegetation that exists on the lot. And I'd like to note that um, just sort of as, as an overview, this is, an, this is a legal non-conforming lot of record. So it's thir 13, 000, about 13,000 square feet, which uh, you know, is 35, 40 percent smaller than what is the minimum lot size for a lot within this uh, zone. Um, and the reduction that we're asking for uh, basically still maintains it as a smaller than legal lot. It reduces it to about 30 percent, um, uh, uh, 30 percent smaller than what, what would be a legal lot. Um, the lot predates modern zoning, the development of the lot, so the house on the lot, the creation of the yard, that also uh, predates zoning, which is pretty obvious when you look at, I mean, you have it in the packet, when you look at the uh, satellite imagery uh, with, the, with the meets and bounds overlay, it's pretty clear this lot was developed and created with uh, really no um, uh, uh, no allowance for, for modern zoning, which makes sense because it was created so long ago. Uh, our goal is to deal with this nonconformity uh, and strike a balance between maintaining these mature trees, maintaining certain important, you know, al almost critical elements, a yard and privacy, which existed during the purchase of the lot, while also focusing the burden on the uh, removing it from the side yard setbacks and focusing it on one setback, which is the front yard setback, uh, which we feel um, 
and, and is supported by the licensed arborist, the front yard setback can sort of handle this, uh, uh, can handle this burden. It's got the dimensional ability because of the discrepancy between the uh, travel way and the road width requirements, uh, the, the topographical ability to uh, absorb this because of the, the discrepancy between the elevation of the road and then the elevation of the proposed development, and then the vegetative ability because, uh, because the vegetation that exists per the arborist along the frontage is sort of a, a witch hazel sort of new growth material which existed prior to the Lee's acquisition of the property. And this new growth material can m much better withstand uh, sort of, you know, d d trimming, cutting, what, what have you, versus the, you know, I mean, decades old uh, red oak and uh, mature trees that exist on other sides of the property. And then um, we, we, re we really want to try and eliminate the burden of the neighbor, which currently the property exists, the, the, the structure exists on their property. And then, um, uh, we w again, we want to maintain sort of the things that are reasonable to expect of a property in the R2 zone, such as this, which are characteristic of the neighborhood, which are yards, privacy, uh, you know, th things of that nature. Is that a good overview? Um, that's great. Mr. Okay. Watson, I, I've got to tell you, I, after the meeting, um, had some concerns about the red oak issue, and I think you probably caught that, because red oaks typically, they go down deep as opposed to out. So I said, well, I'm kind of wondering about that. I did my homework on it before I saw your package. And your credibility is beyond reproach as far as I'm concerned. You were right on with everything you said. And I'm glad you provided the information. I'm glad I had time to review it. I'm glad we tabled this because my assumptions were very wrong as far as the reason for your, your argument for the trees. And you were dead on. You were dead right. And so I, I personally, when I looked at the position of this information he's provided along with the research I had done, he's dead right about those trees. They, they need that room to survive. And I, and I think that's a pretty strong argument. As that was the only issue I think the board had at the time. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I believe that the other issue was that um, we needed to see it a little more, a little better layout of exactly what they were looking at because it was very, a little bit unclear as to the positioning. Um, and I'm still a little bit unclear uh, from looking at, at what you've got up here. Why is it that we couldn't move that back another three or four feet? I, I, I mean, you know, if you want to go from 12 feet to 10 feet, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I prefer the 12 feet for the flexibility allowed with that, but I, I would respect the board's decision to go down to 10 feet. I think it, it's sort of a, it, it really is an unknown. I mean, as uh, the chair was saying there, you know, most trees go down deep. The, right. the, the issue is, I mean, I, I don't have the report, but the issue is we've done some, in preparation for a building, we've done some test holes, and the ledge exists in this lot. So it's not unreasonable to assume that these trees are existing without the sort of deep roots and, and they're existing out. And so if they're not getting down and deep, they're going out further. So the guidelines, um, if we look at the, the report from the arborist on the second or third page, it's talking about a caliper, a, a trunk diameter of greater than 28 inches uh, requires a minimum distance of 30 feet for the canopy. Uh, okay. Conventional wisdom says roots follow the canopy. And so it's it's just it's a level of safety you know th this mature of a tree uh affording privacy to not just one abutter but two abutters um it's it's sort of a dangerous game how close do we want to get to it really and that's why we we're, we're trying to err on on safety's sake but um you asked you, you actually used the lower of the numbers too which i thought was interesting um there's two sets of, of circles i'm not an expert i'm not an arbiter but I did do a lot of homework on it. And because it was inconsistent to me that, that uh, an oak, uh, as you know, the oaks drive straight down, and typically you'll see a pine will spread out. Well, it didn't make sense that an oak at all would be that way. Well, there's no way really that could go out the way it would normally do. It's awful. But they typically use the tr drip line of the tree as the, what's the word? There's a word for it, uh, minimum something. Oh, God. 
whatever it is. But in any event, that's the minimum uh, boundary, and that but when you do the math, they say four and a half feet up. I think it's a critical that. root zone, right? In critical yeah. root zone versus the optimal root zone, right? Which is another probably ten feet around that. So, what I what I really respected is number one, his information was accurate to begin with. Uh, he showed it in the in the more conservative point of view. And for me personally, the issue was, eh, you know, I've heard tree stories before. Um, I believed, I believed what you said, I, and I don't not to say I didn't before. No, no, it's it, it's in trying to confirm that for me. I, you know, this is a variances are sticky by nature, and so, you know, I'd I'd love to get the approval at the first meeting, but the reality is we all need to be uh, on board with it. So whatever we can do to, to. Um, you, you know, make everyone comfortable. I, I, I'd rather have everyone comfortable than have some questions still in the air that could be asked at a later date. So, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll open the. Uh, I'm going to open up the public hearing again for this. Does anybody like to speak on this from the public? I'm going to close the public hearing part of this. We have not received any new letters or anything. Correct. Phone calls. Nothing like that. No. Uh, anything you want to add at all? Um, board questions. We have gone through the requirements of it. I just have one question. Um, how many different styles of houses were looked at? I mean, we're, we're talking about a house that you want to put on here. We want to move it forward. But did you ever consider changing the design of the house so it could fit in there? We have, and... Um, Really, the one of the main there's there's one issue that's not applicable to the board, which is that there is a sort of a private requirement of homes in the community to look a certain of a, of a certain vernacular. Uh, the second is that, in, in my opinion, the property was purchased, and the property was purchased with certain things privacy afforded from the mature trees and a yard. And the, the natural, to, this is going to be long-winded, so I'm sorry, I apologize. But the natural topography of the lot, the, the house is situated in, in, in the only location that I feel it can exist in to be a lot that is consistent with other, to be a house that's consistent with other properties in the neighborhood and still afford or maintain aspects that existed at the time of purchase. And it doesn't make much sense to me to uh, uh, design a house that is standoffish with the yard. And so this L-shaped design, uh, well, borderline L-shaped design, which we've come up with, is the best, you know, a, a good solution for us to sort of engage that yard because that's really what's existed and that's what the what's important to the client and the L the the L esque shape it was an attempt you know albeit my attempt to focus the the development on uh, in that um, you, you know in that lower corner of the property getting as close as we can to the to the setbacks and encroaching on the front yard setback while while still maintaining the existing yard and 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 the trees. Sure. Board member comments, questions? Or a motion? I guess I would like to add one thing. I, I, normally I would not be in favor of a project like this only mm -hmm. just because of trees. Yep. However, it's a kind of a unique uh, area that these guys are building down there, and it's it's a. Um, I'm assuming that when you're talking about an agreement, it's probably a covenant that's on that property, um, and I think probably even prior to that, had they had they thought it through, they probably would have put covenants as far as privacy in that area. It's, it's not like the rest of Scarborough, and so I, not for their privacy. I'm not as concerned for the owners of the property's privacy as, as I am for the for the neighbor's pri privacy. So um, I guess that being said, I would probably go along with uh, with an allowance for the trees in there in this instance, but not in an overall instance, but in, in this particular case, yes. 
And it, you know, I would I would agree with that. If if it were weren't for these trees, I mean, I, I I completely understand. And if it weren't for these trees being, I mean, these trees are the the, the oak, the red oak in particular, is massive. And with the soil conditions and the ledge that exists, I mean, I I have no qualms saying that that personally, I think it's impossible. It would be impossible to reproduce that tree, it, you know, with any certainty. And and if it, if it puts your mind at ease. I mean, conditions uh, two and six, I think, are come into play here. You know, of, of the of the the variance uh, of the of the variance uh, application here, which are that um, the undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. You know, if, if these trees are el eliminated, then uh, that's going to produce a, a very negative consequence to the immediate. Uh, abutters to this property, and then six, the unreasonably adverse effect to the natural environment. I mean that you know. I mean, I'm sure, everyone just read the article about 10% of the tree genome just got wiped out. You know, so I mean, it's this is this is v very real. So and just a reminder from a board point of view, we are not obligated to meet any of the standards of the neighborhood's covenants. That's not our problem. Uh, so we don't have to be limited sure. to that, but that being said, uh, your point wasn't to that. I just wanted to make sure right. people understood that that a neighborhood's covenant is a different than the neighborhood. Uh, questions, comments, or a motion? Uh, does anybody have any questions, any desire, any need to go back through the item, the items, or you I feel comfortable with what we did last week? Sure, Member, and I believe we still probably need to go through the criteria. Fine with me. So why don't we jump right on that? <laughs> you do a curve at me. I just got to blind it. Um, section V, page 26. going to read and you don't have to go into full detail but sure and then we'll talk about each one of these as we go along okay for the uh, uh, findings of uh, fact uh, the need of variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood Would you just like to read a short statement in on that absolutely uh, it's a legal non-conforming lot that that does not m meet minimum lot size uh, additionally, it's burdened by some topographical issue, natural topographical issues, as well as some uh, 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 mature trees that are pushing us in a, in a certain direction. Ms. Shoup, if you wouldn't mind starting at your end with your opinion and uh, whether you're comfortable with that answer or not, and we'll walk right down through. Okay. No worries. I, I can start at the other end if it's easier. Yeah, sorry. Uh, can I start uh, with you guys on that if you wouldn't mind? Uh, just with the answer to that question, we're just going down with the findings of that. Yeah, A, you're still yeah, yeah, Number one, uh, the, uh, yeah. need the variance. Um, need the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. You're on a different one than me. 
Um, no, I agree that it is the, the location of that property, uh, since it's on a rock ledge, um, I agree that it, it does have some unique circumstances there. Where the confusion comes from is that the, the, the actual variance is a practical difficulty variance, but on the um, agenda it just says variance. Oh, okay. okay. That's, that's all we've got. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. Mr. Crockett? Yeah, I would agree on that with the new information that we have on the trees and um, the detailed charts and dimensions for everything is kind of a finding of fact as to that it would affect the natural environment there. Okay. And what you say then? I'm fine with it. And the you? I agree with that. I think it's okay. important to maintain the privacy there, there for the neighbors as well. I think it is definitely the circumstance of the property being the ledge circumstance of uh, the, the 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 amount of change actually is going to be minimal and aesthetic and I think it is absolutely the property itself and where it sits uh, number two the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties the uh, I, the the variance will allow the property to exist as it was at the time of purchase with the yard, with the privacy, which is reasonable to expect uh, in this zone. It, it also, you know, benefits the uh, character of the neighborhood by removing existing burdens. Let me start right down here. Are you guys in? Yeah, I, I would have to agree. I, I think, in, in, if anything, it will uh, it will help maintain that privacy that the neighbors in that area come to expect and the and the style of house as well I you know, there was a question to you as to did you look at other styles and in that area again they have their kind of their own unique style of home so I agree I think it's gonna it will help maintain that value if not increase it okay. I would agree probably removing the trees would detract from the environment and the characteristics of the neighborhood so Keeping those in, in play is probably going to enhance it. I'm fine with it. I think that these are nice and they help maintain the value of the nice street there. Now I want to qualify just on the, on the tree issue. We're not saying that the trees would come down if we, in fact, move the property back, but we are saying that there's enough of a risk of that happening that it's not, that risk is, to me, uh, because of the exact circumstances of this piece, because of the exact circumstances of those kinds of trees, this again, if it was a different, if a different ground would be different, different trees would be different. But this is a very unique situation. I don't think the risk is worth the reward of trying to make it fit. I think the chances are that that's the, that's the logic that I'm using on this example and why I think it meets it. Yeah, this is a very unique instance, <laughs> which has been supported with the graphical representation with the dimensions as well as the licensed arborist who and what you set up front in the previous meeting was accurate and you confirmed that so thank you thank you uh, the practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or the prior owner no that no it's not uh, no I agree with that yeah I don't think it was an action by the applicant or prior owner I agree I agree unless they planted the tree I would agree uh, no other fe feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Um, again, I, I think that uh, they are trying to, I think the one thing that I like about this plan is that, that you are trying to make it more conforming by getting off of the neighbor's property and moving it as close into that box as you possibly can. So I, I think that that's really your only option on that. Do we have the total dimensions on the homes? Because I don't see on the charts of the plans here, like what the total square footage or what the total. I, do, I didn't. I, I apologize. I did, I did not include that information. The last meeting, the um, the existing home is about 2,700 square feet, 2,800 square feet, and the proposed home is 28 to 2,900 square feet, depending on the configuration of the decks. So they are comparable in size. We're not. We're not proposing to ask for a variance to then build a 4,000, 5,000 square foot home. But it is larger. I'm sorry, say the one. It, it is larger from what you're saying? It is, yes, it is larger, but I would, I would maintain that it is minimally larger. 100 square feet. 
fewer than 5%? Uh, this, this is the toughest one for me to struggle with because a feasible alternative would be to bring the house down a little bit and get it closer to the line. So I, I wouldn't agree that there's no feasible alternative. Mm -hmm. I agree with them. That there isn't, there isn't a, a feasible alternative or that you're okay with the fact that he's showing it as he is showing it? I'm okay with the fact that there really isn't any feasible alternative okay. after true. what he discussed about the neighborhood. It's hard to, you know, you, you have to, the way that this is structured, as you guys are very familiar with, is that it's hard to have a black and white answer to this. So we're stringing together, you know, the, the the ability for us to string together multiple arguments to answer one question is is critical for this and you know I mean feasible feasible is reasonable you know and it's reasonable to expect a pri privacy which exists at a time of purchase a yard which exists at a time of purchase which both of those things coupled together due to the natural topography due to the nonconformity of the lot due to the existing mature trees you know these are these are arguments that we use to uh maintain that that this is the most realistic this is the most practical this is the most reasonable uh from our opinion alternative Ms. Shoup, did you, i don't think it's a chance to answer on that uh, yeah no i mean i think we've discussed this at length and i appreciate the evidence that you have submitted in support and i agree i mean i don't think there really is a feasible alternative I think that uh, you bring up a very good point, uh, Mr. Crockett, as far as the, the the change in size. The reason I didn't have a problem with that is by looking at the top, top excuse me, topography. What you did is try to line it up with what was actually on that topography, and less than five percent to me was it, it wasn't. This wasn't an intent to expand the use. And the other thing is, we're getting it off from somebody else's property which I think is a big deal. So yeah, you're gaining maybe a 5% edge there. But I, I don't, to me, that's not the motive here. And the way those, the rocks were designed, the way it, it fits the, the layout you have, to me makes sense, even though it is a, what I would normally agree 100% in your position with that. But the two issues to me are the, the fact that it's off the other person's property, and in fact, it, it does align with the top of topography of the property. Okay, the next one is uh, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly in conformance with the surrounding properties. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're eliminating the burden on the neighbor's property. We're uh, focusing the, uh, the encroachment onto one setback. Uh, and, I mean, we're making it more nearly into, as best we can, more nearly into conformance. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. Uh, you, not only are you moving moving it over, you're rebuilding it the way that most of those houses have been rebuilt, and that is with the same same type of character that they've had in the past because all those places down there started off many, many years ago. So um, I think you've done a good job there. Yeah, and I do appreciate the finding of fact that it's coming off the neighbor's property. So we're ob obviously taking something that's intruding in someone else's property right now and putting it on the property it should be and within the envelope. Yeah, I, th I think you've done a good job of pulling it off, putting it as much into the building envelope as possible. And actually, if you take a look at it, and you know, somebody could come forward if they had a house just like this and wanted a limited reduction in yard size to put on a porch, we would probably grant that pretty easily. So I don't see any problem with this at all. Under the new, under the, you're talking about under the new regulations. That you guys helped put that through. The new, are you talking about under the new regulations that just came into effect? The C, whatever the zone this is in now. The no, he's just talking about the limited reduction. Oh, just limited reduction. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Ms. Shoup? Well, I agree with everything the board has said. Yeah, um, same place. I have no problem with that. Um, Granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. So again, I, I think we're preserving the natural environment, uh, so certainly no, no change there. I would agree. Measures have been made to preserve the environment, and proof and documentation we've got from the reports in front of us show us that. So, 
I'll tell you that one picture of that tree is very, very, very impressive. And just by saving that tree, I think we're doing a wonderful job. I didn't know you were a tree hunter. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. No, I mean, I agree with the board. I think it's great that you really considered the trees and the natural resources. Uh, I think it fits perfectly normally uh, to be candid. Like I said, I think that you did your homework. Uh, it would be a great excuse in some cases as an excuse. I don't think that's the case in this case. I think you're you're generally looking after the best interest of the community, the neighborhood, the landscape, the environment, uh, which spends the runoff. Uh, there's so many reasons why I think what you're doing is right. Is uh, I, I'm very comfortable with it. And you're not in the flood zone. No. So that's that. Um, so I, as putting that in as findings of fact, um, do I have any um, other questions? No more questions, but I would like to add one thing here. That if I think if I'm to approve this, um, because we don't have actual house plans with square footage and everything, I would I would want to put in there that it's uh, it would be uh, approved um, with no more than. 150 square additional square feet above what currently is there, or 180, or whatever. We need to pick a number because. Um, Do we just go with the plan as? We, we don't have we don't have dimensions on that plan. Yeah, that's what concerns me. Is we don't have any numbers of the building. We have a picture of it, but we don't we don't have numbers. And that's that's something that we usually pretty much always require. Mm -hmm. That's I, I don't I'm not I'm not concerned about that. Yeah, but we are. <laughs> no, that, I mean, I'm just telling you that I'm not concerned about it. I'm making sure that the uh, planning to the code department. My biggest concern would be that the code enforcement office is okay with how they deal with that. Do you have any problem with anything on that? Or what's any tighter? Well, it's <clears throat> difficult to say, you know, without numbers. That's the, that's the problem. So I don't know if Trevor has. What if, in lieu of numbers, we use the dimensional requirements that were asked for at the at the last meeting? I mean, I'm I'm not I can't, you know, at a certain point I'm going to meet the uh, coverage re requirements, uh, you know, the coverage maximums. You have a site plan that's to scale, even though it's not dimensioned. We have a site plan. F this site plan was uh, developed by Owen Haskell. Which is a licensed the footprint that you've placed at the proposed, the proposed footprint. Yes, that's is, correct. Is to scale, correct? Yes, that's correct. It's drawn on it's drawn on computer. So, if and when the building plans are submitted and a site plan is submitted and it basically matches that, you know, without without going more than uh, a foot or two outside the perimeter of what you're showing there, and obviously has to meet the same. Requested dimensional requirements. Yes. So I mean, if that's if that's acceptable, if if there's any question when we receive the plans that it's not the same type of footprint that's being proposed, it's something drastically different. I can I can always remand it back to the board for for further review at that point. Does that sound fair? I'd, I'd be good with that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's very reasonable. Uh, and, and as long as he's comfortable, that's all I care about. I I said it before. I have no issue with this. Fantastic. I'm never comfortable. <laughs> yeah, as long as he's tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like me. So, okay. So, uh, you okay with that? Yes. Sorry. It's just being handled as uh, that it, when the motion comes forward, that it would be it would meet the expectations of the code enforcement officer. Okay. That clear enough. If you take it tighter. If, if I could, I'd, I'd propose that you use language something like matching the proposed footprint as shown on the submitted site plan. Perfect. That, I'll, that's I'll make a, a lot, motion. That's a lot more easy. A lot sure. more easy. <coughs> a lot easier to <laughs> put your hands around. And then get well. So I'll actually move uh, that uh, we approve the plan as. Uh, <laughs> as, a, as you proposed, <laughs> I like that the perfectly way to put it. I, I mean, wouldn't wouldn't the wouldn't the proposed building have to match the site plan that you guys approve We've anyway? We've seen a bunch of different things. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, we'd like to tell you that uh, <laughs> it all falls the way it's supposed to, but not always. All right. And so I, I think the way that uh, Mr. Longstaff's defined it, I think meets 
if he's kept, if he can make it work, I don't have a problem with that. So that's my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, all in favor? And opposed? We have one opposed. And if it that does carry. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Appeal number 2586, special exception appeal request by.